All right, so Suze, we did this comparison where we compared the Helix and the Axe Effects, mm -hmm. and it was a blind test, and uh, I, you played it. We all sort of went along with the video, Yeah. took our guesses. This is a little different than our earlier one. We did Tonex mm -hmm. versus Helix. That was all the same effects. Some of these effects are different, different compressor, different delay, different verb. Mm -hmm. Playing it, what was your... You've been making a bunch of Axe stuff mm. that just came out. You've been... There's Helix stuff. Yeah. What's your take? Axe versus Helix. Man, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but like I I thought the Fractal was going to own the Helix. Like I was like, man, this is going to be embarrassing, like how far off these two are, mm -hmm, whatever. Same mm -hmm. thing with the Tonex. And then I got in playing it, and I was like, dude, Helix sounds good. <laughs> You know, and it's just like this side yeah. by side, which yeah. I would never do. Like mm -hmm. I normally play one all day or all week. Yes. Making products for it, shooting demos, editing demos. I'm like in that world. Then I'll go to another pedal or platform. It's like, oh yeah, this is cool in a different way. But the side by side, like really listening closely mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh, when you do that, they're actually can be very, very close. They can There's, be very, very and, close, like indistinguishably. <laughs> And even when you hear differences, I think I would use either one of those tones. Yeah, they're they're different, not better or yeah. worse. It's just a slight, some slight variation. Right. Yeah. What when you were setting this up, mm -hmm. I walked into your office. Oh, that's funny. And yeah. I walked in, and he's holding this sparkle strat, John, and he just plays a little like riff, and I go, "Whoa, that sound! Give me that!" Now, what was up on the screen was the axe editor. And so I said, let me play that. That sounds good. And I knew immediately. I was like, go ahead. <laughs> so I, I grab the guitar. I sit down and I play. And the first words out of my mouth, I said, I could give up my Kemper if this is the sound I could have. It was it was a 74 Purple Plexi. Uh, and it was great. And he goes, look at Logic. And that was when I looked. I realized what? And I also realized the Helix was on the floor running. <laughs> And it was the Helix patch. Now, I, so then I switched between them, and I, I, I thought this the seventy four Purple Plexi Helix patch sounded mm. just ace with this guitar. Mm. Felt good, felt incredible. It was just juicy and nice. <laughs> made a couple changes to the axe and I, and it got similar, you know, but I went, man, something's actually just really special about this. Mm. Now maybe it's the compressors we're running. Cause this whole comparison was tone at our tone match stuff on both platforms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so on the helix, I'm always, we're always running that the kind of compressors that I started dialing in way back, which is kind of a normal compressor up front. But then mm -hmm. after the amp, there's a light like uh, uh 1176 like kind of it's like 50 percent or maybe less mix mm. um this one was 50 percent um it's it's pretty light but you turn it on and off it's just a sl little bit of level boost but it adds just a nice sort of response that i think is really it just makes the amp feel alive and mm -hmm. juicy mm. i don't know if it's the best thing for every amp we were having that discussion too yeah. does this work better on some amps than others but mm. on this i went this is it mm -hmm. i could just play this all day yeah for sure so yeah these types of a b comparisons too are interesting because like we were saying there's usually some sort of like objective like mm -hmm. i would like it to sound like this you know so you right. pull up these two things and it's like well which one sounds better mm -hmm. and then you sort of try to force the other one that way you know and it might be helix or it might be you know uh tone x or fractal whatever yeah and then you do the next time and it might be different. And so like, it's not necessarily the same as like you were saying, like optimizing for this platform, like mm -hmm. make this sound as good as it can, 
make this one sound as good as it can yeah. and then say, okay, which one am I more comfortable playing or do, brings me more joy yeah. playing or whatever, right. however you want to rate them. If you're trying to make them sound identical, there's normally some standard that's like make the helix match the fractal. Yeah. And so you our know? tone yeah. match stuff like that, that becomes, so these are both tone match, which is I think why they get so close. Yeah. If we did this like uh, in a way where it just get the best sound, you're obviously going to come up with a lot of differences and then it's going to be up to the listener mm -hmm. just by preference. Maybe right. one is a little brighter, one is a little darker, right. one is a little more this or that. That becomes a little more subjective just on what you're looking for, totally. you know, what you like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even the feel can be subjective. I think largely right. though the feel is where most of the units get outed. You know, sometimes they have a stiffer feel or whatever. I was thinking today, too, um, and someone actually in the comments said this about the last video, the Tonex uh, Helix video, mm -hmm. but it's a great observation. Like, he said, I, I like some of these sounds more with certain guitars yes. and other. And yeah. I said, that's very important because, like, I was playing the telly today when I was doing all of the sounds but like you made some of those like the deluxe reaver was made two years ago or something on sure. the on yeah, the, yeah. On the uh, sure. helix and i probably made some of those with the jam pro mm -hmm. and so th when i pull up the sounds it's like whoa these are this is very dark this is very bright it's like mm -hmm. well that day that we made them they sounded good yeah. and we hit save right. yeah. and we moved on two yeah. years later i open up the same thing <laughs> right. and i'm like this doesn't sound like the thing i made a week ago right it's like, well, it's how many variables have changed? No, a lot of know? variables in the reference guitar can change a lot. And just yeah. what you're kind of looking for. Um, you know, we all go through periods where our guitar, like, preferences kind of change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for changes. I yeah. think that, I think it, I think there's an ebb and flow for sure. Right. So if you were going to play, so uh, uh, Fractal versus Helix, mm -hmm. if you're going to choose one, what unit are you taken out yeah. and playing. Yeah. I think one thing that this AB, you know, we don't have 50 hours to do these things. You know, one of the mm. things, the limitations is we didn't go crazy into effects. Mm. You know, we tried to make the delay and reverb sound close and like there's a chorus one on one of them, you know. But having played both of them, I know the fractal effects are far superior <laughs> to the right, Helix right, right, stuff. Right. You know, like every model right. sounds Maybe better. Maybe especially the verbs. Yeah, the verbs yeah. are much better. You have mm -hmm. more delay sounds to choose from. There's just like a bunch in there. So like that's what would pull me to the fractal is uh, just the mm. I know any set any sound I create is going to be with the best effects for that sound you know um, I will say this I do dig yeah. the fractal uh, uh, editor yeah but I could see how someone would like the helix more just because it feels a little more streamlined. Yeah. There's definitely more deep editing stuff in the fractal, which totally. you know, for good or bad is what I'm saying. If you oh, like, yeah. if, if that's a positive, great, it's a positive. Yeah. I can see how someone would say, yeah. the Helix has enough stuff to play around with, and yeah. you sort of just, and it's easy to do. Oh, and there yeah. definitely is a bigger learning curve on the fractal stuff. Oh yeah, but there, but it goes a lot more in depth. I mm -hmm. bet the fractal has ten times more parameters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just, <laughs> and, 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 it, and it, when you first sit down, yeah. You have to go Google, how do I get my signal chain to like connect yeah. and go to the next? Because it's it's actually not intuitive. You had to show me, Yeah, you know, <laughs> because I was like, uh, I had actually only worked with the unit. I never really pulled up. I had pulled up the thing, but that was on Axe 2 and stuff. Uh -huh. It had been so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it, it's. Yeah, I remember you had one years ago. Yeah. You have to and, know. And we said then, we're like, this is the craziest unit. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to learn it. You just mm -hmm. got to know it. So, and, and the Helix does feel very, uh, it just it's, feels a little more like drag and drop. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it has user that, friendly, that I would call it. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Well, plus every single block has like the same parameter. Yeah, the there, a lot of it's and... like, like kind of, yeah, and it's just all different color. I mean, the other one has yeah. color coding too, but it yeah. just, it's pleasing. The Helix editor is pleasing to look at, pleasing mm -hmm. to use. Yep. you know well that's subjective but, i would uh you were asking about what <laughs> unit i would yeah the, what would you the take? fm9 to me the is, nine. is amazing yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's a great size uh all the buttons and the functionality and all that i just the x3 with the extra thing i mean cool <laughs> you know it's just you're a talking lot about of, the fc6 with the yeah, fm9 it's a lot of gear and right and stuff to manage and is it all set up and everything i right, just like right. the all it's like a kemper stage is mm -hmm. the fm9 you know mm -hmm. um and i just think it's great yeah 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 I thought the AB's tests were really interesting. Yeah, you were saying you liked some of them. Yeah, I mean, I because I was doing it blind, blind mm -hmm. also, 
And yeah, what was it? I like the, I preferred the axe. The axe on the BC-15. But then I preferred the... The Helix the on Helix. the Deluxe Reverb. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we And noticed, then the other one, I I was like, these, like, these actually the sound really, <laughs> yeah. really, really, really yeah. similar. One of the things we noticed mm-hmm. in the test is I thought, and, and we all kind of noted this, the ones that sounded the most different were the one I thought were the ones that used overdrives. Mm. So it was like we had two yeah. things that maybe were very close and then you turned on the King of Tone for the BC-15, yeah. was King of Tone for both. And those then it made it sound more different than it did similar. Mm-hmm. Right. And then same thing with the, the Klon. Klon. I think I wanted to put on the Klon and yeah. it made them more different. Which is maybe one of the underappreciated uh, th- characteristics of some of these models mm. or of some of these units is that we, we I think we focus on the amp a lot and the ability to run IRs and all this stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, there's just different references and there's different levels of accuracy and there's just different stuff. And maybe there is a unit you just like the overdrives more. You just like the delays more. You yeah. like the verbs more. If overdrives are get are being are different, you know other stuff is different. Mm-hmm. You know that you know the deluxe memory man is going to be kind of different. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You know the hall verb is going to be. I mean that's subjective too because there's not really a hall verb standard. It's just that's a type of reverb. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm. uh, if I had to choose one, like I. See, I would say FM9 also, but I, I, that Helix was that 74 the, purple play. I literally the, said I could great. give up my Kemper for this sound. Like, that bears repeating. <laughs> I mean, with as much shade, sometimes we talk about Helix, like not having this or that or missing or being 10 years old or whatever. That sound was like, yeah, I could that play sounds this. It. And, and I think it's because it's yeah. you, it, that is one unit that I really, really feel it's model specific, not platform specific. Mm. It's not mm. the Helix ranks here versus these other things. I think there are some models that are kind of pretty weak. Yeah. And one of the things I noticed was that kind of grumbly characteristic when we were pushing that King of Tone into the BC-15. That yeah. AC-15 had that grumbly thing, which I tried to describe on the Bandmaster in the last comparison mm-hmm. we did. There's this... Yeah grumbly nature that it uh, does like a it's like a breakup in the low mids and yes. it just doesn't quite act like an amp yeah mm-hmm. it's almost like it i don't know like it can't breathe or something mm-hmm. i like i always say it's kind of like the way on a tube amp the notes get cleaner before they come down in volume and that's kind of true mm-hmm. of m- a lot of gain levels yeah. you know um, unless something super has a bunch of cascading gain notes clean up a bit and Dumble, sometimes people describe them as having like a dirty mid-range with a cleaner high end. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get that, how that sounds. And uh, it, it's a quality that's just in there. Yeah. You know, and some models don't seem to have it, though. The Plexi model in the Helix, I think, is great. Mm. The bright Plexi, I think, is awesome. The Jumper, too. But I would take that bright Plexi model yeah. in the Helix all day long. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's great. I know that like there's been times where we've like pulled stuff into logic and opened up an EQ and like really tried to narrow that Mm -hmm. specific thing. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. And it is like, it's like a low mid. And if you drop that one thing, you kind of get, you kind of clean it up a little bit. Just that grumbly thing. It's in there. And yeah, it's, it's in there more so in some models than in others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right. I think that like, we always try to say like, oh, this this platform or this platform or this platform, but mm-hmm. it's really like this model in this platform mm-hmm. beats this model in this platform. Yeah, but not every model, and right. I, you know, and that's the hard part. And I think it's it's the it is the weak point of tone matching. You know, Fractal has the tone matching built in. Mm-hmm. We do tone matching on the Helix by creating a custom IR. Mm-hmm. But you're always going to rely on that model. Yeah. You know, it all that tone matching can do is basically match the EQ. Right. It, it's not going to if 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 there's some level of breakup in some frequencies and not others, that's going to come through. If mm-hmm. there's some level of compression that happens at at this amount of gain or not, that's going to come through. Like mm-hmm. the IR can't adjust for that. Right. So, and that's maybe where it's all a bit different than like capture tech something like a quad cortex or a tone x or a or a kemper or a um what's that other one head rush there we go and uh <laughs> and, <laughs> Remember that one? And, Poor head rush. and maybe that's 
you know, but like, like for good or bad, well, that's, and I think that's, that's just what it is. And I think that's why in my mind, I've always like really separated those two technologies. Mm -hmm. Like they're not at all the same thing. Right, right. They're not trying to be the same thing. Right. And they have, you know, it's not even that one's better than the other. It's just like, they're not the same. They mm -hmm. don't end up with the same results. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Play whatever sounds good. If it sounds good, it is good. I heard that said one time on yeah. YouTube uh, and on a secure YouTube channel no one's ever heard of or watches. Mm. <laughs> JHS? Solid. <laughs> <laughs> it was either that or Jim Lil. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Those are the two. 